Your guys' story is pretty bizarre. It was just fun to write some brutal music. And I think that shows with that, with the music that we write, we just have fun doing it. Like, but you went like the opposite. <laughs> well, actually, you know, I went from this and now I'm going to just go heavy as possible. That's great, dude. Use EMG pickups because they help you get the heaviest tone possible. Head over to emgpickups.com and use my promo code HEAVY at checkout and get 15% off. And then once you write the heaviest song of all time, head over to distrokid.com slash VIP slash Garza and save 30% off your membership to get all your songs on all streaming platforms. And now to the heaviest podcast of all time. Today we have the handsome man, Kyle Anderson from Brandon Sacrifice, singer. Dude, honored to have you here, dude. It's, it's cool. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. So you're in town here in Santa Ana. Yes. So you came down from Toronto, which is where you're from, correct? I'm from Toronto, born and raised. Born and raised Toronto. Yeah. Wow. And you came all the way from there to here to do one show. To one show. Dedication, dude. <laughs> hey, it's worth it, man. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're about to play a beautiful venue. I'm very excited. Never never played that one before, so. Wow. At this point, how many tours have you guys done? Ooh. Um, it's eight or nine. Okay. Yeah. That's nuts. Yeah, you guys, uh, you guys' story is pretty bizarre because you had... Brandon Sacrifice formed in 2018, correct? That's right, yeah. And then you guys get your second tour is the Summer Slaughter. Yeah. And that is so, that is, for that to be your second tour, that, that is pretty nuts. And also, I, mean, I uh, correct me if, if I'm wrong, but, but your story with, with your band behind that is like you, what, you get you a phone call the day before the tour was going to get announced, correct? It's, it's, that's exactly it. And then you just, and what you said is, fuck it, I, like we're on it. We didn't even talk to the other guys in the band. We just straight up accepted it and said, we'll figure it out after. So, because we wanted to make sure that we were part of that regardless. So, and yeah. everybody was in, obviously. So, obviously, right? Yeah. So those are rare moments where you have to make those quick choices, huh? Totally. You, I mean, you got to do it. That's, that's a great opportunity, and great bands were on that run. We had, uh, I think it was like a triple headliner with The Faceless and Cattle Decapitation, which is one of my favorites. Oh, wow. And uh, Carnifex, cool. which is a classic OG deathcore band. Yeah. It's so it's so bizarre hearing that term, old school deathcore. Like, <laughs> like, like, like whenever I hear it, I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, my goodness. But hey, I mean, it, I mean, time passes quick. It does. You know, it's great that you guys... You guys got a call, and you really took advantage of that opportunity. Because um, most bands wouldn't do that. It's like, oh, like, let me, let me talk to the guys, and then how much are we, we going to get paid and all that shit. But then someone else will fucking swoop you. You know? Totally. It's just, yeah. I've, I've, I've seen it happen. And you, guys did, you guys did the right thing. You, you, know? you got to take those opportunities, and sometimes time is everything. Timing is everything. It is. So we felt that was a, a good time and a great lineup, and we wanted to be a part of it, so... We were going to do what we had to do. So You guys did it. I mean, you, it's always like the what comes first and the how comes after. Exactly. It's just, and so it's funny how your brain starts to freak out. Like, no, you got you to know what's going on like all the time. But, you know, most of the time, you know, when you got something badass comes out, you just kind of do it. You know, and yeah. just, then you just figure it out. Okay, well, we need to, how are we going to get there? How are we going to, okay, we need a fucking van or, you know, then you just, you just keep going. One day at a time. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I was listening to... The band before Brandon Sy Sacrifice, which you were, you've been playing music with Leo for a, a while, correct? Long time, uh, since about 2013 or so. Wow. Yeah. And you had the, uh, the band called The After Image. The After Image, yeah. Now, I'm a fan of your, of your clean singing on that. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. It's fucking cool. Very different from what I do now, for sure. I know, yeah. <laughs> how do you guys, walk me through how you guys go... Because it seems like Brandon Sacrifice and, and this band, too, like, seems like it was you and Leo. Yeah, I mean, there were some other writers involved in that project, but towards the end of it, um, we sort of 
combined ideas at that point. We um, we lived together for about a year and wrote a lot of music in that span. A lot oh, of the wow. a lot of cooler after image songs and just a lot of songs in different genres for fun. So we've always yeah. worked really well together. And uh, I honestly wouldn't want to work with anybody else. Uh, I think we've found this crazy synergy that is a once in a lifetime kind of thing. So, yeah, yeah. How do you go from that band to hey, well, we're, let's just write the heaviest shit of all time? How does how does that, like, <laughs> how did that like how did like the like, brand sacrifice come up and start? So we were in we were dealing with the after image. We had an album out at the time. It was called Eve, and we had just uh, we had plans to go to Japan with that band. Um, so we played, we were going to play a couple of shows. And in between that, I said to Leo, I'm kind of bored. Let's try writing something that is ridiculously heavy. And I sent him some examples, um, of stuff I was listening to. I think had some Viljarda in there and, um, like classic death core. And, uh, we, we kind of put that, he put together, uh, the first song that we wrote was Eclipse. So we put that mm -hmm. together and then we just started writing really heavy songs and I was trying to challenge myself as a vocalist, you know, doing more low stuff and crazier vocals that I never really tried mm -hmm. with the After Image because since I was more focused on singing in sort of mid mid-range screams. So it was just more of a challenge and something to do for fun because I always loved Deathcore growing up and, and mm -hmm. brutal death metal and, and all those other genres. So... Um, Leo originally came from Tech Death prior oh. to being in the After Image. He was in a band called Ascariasis, which was local at the time. And uh, so he has a background with death metal. Wow. So uh, I think it, it came together pretty well. It seemed pretty natural, and we had a lot of fun doing it. It was actually way more fun at the time to write Brand of Sacrifice stuff than it was the After Image. Really? Because so much thought had to go into all the crazy riffs in After Image and keys and writing good hooks and all that kind of stuff that yeah it was just fun to write some brutal music and i think that shows with that with the music that we write we just have fun doing it we don't really care we just release what comes natural to us wow so it started off like you wanted sounds like you wanted to like challenge your, yourself and just have fun yeah that's so that's so bizarre and and the first song that you guys put out which eventually was i mean that was a ep yeah, but yeah. man, like, that was the first song you guys wrote, which is like I means one of your most top stream songs. It is. Yeah. <laughs> How the fuck does that work? You got you guys. I have no idea. Right, right out of the gates, you guys had this fucking sound. Yeah, it's uh, it's crazy to think about, but I uh, I think uh, that everything just came together really well, and we're still doing it that way. Just both of us in our bedrooms, and we're everything self produced. So wow, yeah. That's so nuts. Like that's kind of unheard of. Do first song you guys write together? That's well, we found, found our sound. First song, boom. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck is that? My goodness. Like there's no there's no demo. There's no fucking four demos. <laughs> you guys just fucking <laughs> boom. That's that is so cool to see, man. And uh, obviously, people really like that that first EP. Yeah. You know, okay. and then eventually that. Uh... So then, what happens when? You guys dropped that EP. What like like what happens after that? So we dropped it literally when we were in Japan at the time with our other band. Interesting. And uh, it sort of went under the radar for a little bit, and then people started hearing a clips, and then all of a sudden, somebody on Facebook made a video of a pastor, kind of you know when they. Sp Christians speak in tongues and they kind of flop around and yeah. go nuts, but they dubbed it with Eclipse. Oh, wow. And it went viral on Facebook. So then now we started getting a lot of people hearing the band and making memes about the band with, with our songs in it. So it started uh, a snowball effect, I guess, because of Facebook itself. What year is this? This would have been sort of towards the end of 2018, I'd say. 2018? And it, you guys went viral on Facebook? Yeah. Wow. It's like millions of views on that silly pastor video. <laughs> Damn. Viral on Facebook, and then you're on memes. And then, I mean, I, I assume that just translated to people started streaming it. 
Yeah, people right? started streaming it, and uh, yeah, we were we were totally independent at that time, and uh, still we're trying to make the after image work. But I think we were realizing it was on the way out. Hmm. Because, like I said before, it's not really as fun to, to write that stuff anymore. We were sort of feeling like we had to one up everything, and there was so much stress involved that maybe we created it for ourselves in our heads. Yeah, but. Um, Making Brand of Sacrifice was a, a breath of fresh air. It was fun, again, to make music. And, and that's what it's all about, really, I think. And the listener can tell if your heart and soul's into something, I feel. Absolutely. You're right. So the, yeah, People can tell, I and mean, your fans definitely can tell when, when you're having fun or not. You know, yeah. it's cool. That's, you know, usually it's backwards. Like, usually you start off playing heavy shit, then people want to go, oh, I want to do something more a little poppy. But, yeah, but you went like the opposite. <laughs> well, actually, you know, I went from this, and now I'm gonna just go heavy as possible. That's great, dude. It's rare. Yeah, I I don't even know how it worked out that way, but I'm happy it did. Uh, so, you, you said that you guys track like you guys you guys are pretty self contained. So how? Mm. So I, I assume you recorded everything by yourselves. Yeah. And so then, and then you just you just put it up on Spotify. Is that I mean? So um, I'll record all my vocals just in my home office studio, and uh, Leo, same thing. He does all the guitars and he mixes. Uh, he mastered that EP as well, so it was completely all done by ourselves in our in our rooms uh, individually. He's uh, he's in the states and I'm in Canada, mm. but. Uh, that's how we did it, and uh, nowadays we have a distribution partner uh, called Blood Blast. Cool, uh, which is a branch of Nuclear Blast. Heard of them, yes. So um, that's who we put the music out through at the moment. And for a time, we were on a, a record label, uh, Unique Leader Records, for nice. a short period. So, yeah. But uh, it started off with us just putting it on. I think it was like TuneCore or CD Baby or something. Yeah, like that. yeah. So, wow. Yeah. <laughs> You guys put it up yourselves and it hits. Yeah. I'm just I am a little bit confused about like and then and then we'll, we'll like like we'll move on because I, I, I didn't know this. So how did I wonder how the person that put your music over like that that preacher going crazy, I wonder how, how they found you guys. You know, because if, if you just put it out yourself, mm -hmm. like how like how you got traction. Well, I mean, I, I assume they probably went they were probably a fan of it might your, have been a, yeah, your, might have been a prior fan. Your, your 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 prior band. That's fucking nuts, dude. Yeah. Fan a fan of yeah, that's probably that's probably what what it was. I'm just so fascinated because like, oh, for go like you you drop an EP and then boom. Holy shit, dude. I, I haven't seen that since fucking Job or Cowboy, dude. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> dude, they were like our competition band. Like they put out that EP Doom. Yeah. I was like, oh man. That that actually made me almost like I remember like uh, I I heard it I was like man I fucking quit <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know it's just like when like when when something's like so fucking good you it know, still holds up still holds up man they yeah. they struck magic with, with those fucking four or five songs mm -hmm. man I wish they kept going with that, they don't sound like that anymore with, with that sound yeah. they just fucking they uh, had it it was so cool man yeah, they were like uh, I'm a pretty competitive guy. And uh, whenever Drive for Cowboy came up, I was like, fuck that band. <laughs> fuck that band. <laughs> but I mean, obviously, we, we all became friends. And I, yeah. I love them. We've done our first tour ever was, was with them. It was, we played like fucking, I don't know, like five, ten shows around uh, here. Okay. And no one ever knew about it. It was like our first, our first tours ever, you know? And I just, you know, yeah, you guys, seeing what happened with your first EP kind of take, takes it back to, like, to that time. It's cool. You know, I, yeah. I I love seeing bands in this genre just come up. You know, me too. Yeah, it's awesome. It's a, uh, it's growing like crazy. It, it's uh, I think this resurgence, I guess, whatever you want to call it, or the new wave of deathcore is really cool. And yeah. everybody's going back and listening to all the classic albums too. Yeah, which and it might sound crazy to you to, to hear people say classic, but I guess that's how people yeah. look at it now. But uh, I mean, I grew up listening to Suicide Silence and Job for a Cowboy and wow. Carnifex and all those bands. You know, I've 
I've been in the scene. A lot of people don't know that I'm a little bit older uh, compared to like some of the newer bands. They're all like a lot of early 20s guys. You know? Yeah. I'm, I'm 32. So, nice. um, yeah. So I was around for the first wave of Deathcore. Oh, nice. People don't know that. Yeah. But, yeah. But it's very cool to see a lot of the new bands trying new things and adding new flares and elements to Deathcore. It's very cool. It's even cool that you guys are doing it. It's so weird, huh? It's so weird when it's you, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, so is that me? I would say, I mean, how does it feel for, like, how's it been for, for like you and and the rest of the guys coming up with this, with, with the genre? You know what? I didn't, I never thought that I would be a part of this genre, personally. Uh, hmm. I love the music, but I've always been more involved in metalcore. Yeah. So it, it's funny being a part of this, but I, I always loved deathcore and I always wanted to do heavier, play heavier music, but I grew up playing in like melodic metalcore bands and progressive metalcore bands and stuff like that. But yeah. it feels great. It feels great. And we're friends with all the other bands that are growing as well alongside us and blowing up like Lorna Shore mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, Shadow of Intent and Signs of the Swarm and all these, all these great bands. That, so it's just really cool. Um, feels great to be a part of it and i'm excited to see what happens next because i think there's going to be even more bands coming personally totally so i think we're ready for like v2 of this wave soon oh shit so. well i usually act uh i will ask this question like later on or at the end of the pod but since it's coming up now where where do you see it going hmm i think there's probably going to be a little more electronic stuff coming okay personally um, there might also be bands going back to the original style that you guys coined back in the day. I think there might be wow. some like classic sound coming. Wow. Like I know that Angel Maker touched a little bit on that. Yeah. As well. And, but their, their newest album isn't as much in that direction, but I think, I think you're going to see some people touch on how things used to sound. Cause I think. For example, on the metalcore side, I feel like Knocked Loose is an example of 2007 and 2006 metalcore style. Oh, with yeah. The dissonant chords and the... 100%. So I think that's going to happen in deathcore soon, too. So I think there's going to be... It's going to go further in the direction of what maybe Brand of Sacrifice does with electronics and orchestral stuff and whatnot. But mm -hmm. it's also going to go the opposite direction, too. I think you're going to get both. That's, what, that's my guess. I could be wrong, but... Damn. Yeah, you're going to have uh, yeah a lot of bands like you guys with their own style and their own ver version of it. Mm -hmm. It's it's so cool. It's definitely a lot better now uh, because like I mean, I mean back, I mean, back in the day, like it's kind of only one sound. Then like sure, like, like, like we came out and then like the copycats. <sighs> I was like, holy shit! But but now it's it's way different now. Like every band that comes up, like you guys or Shadow of Ten, Angel Maker, Of Sulfur, everyone's kind of adding their own thing to it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, damn, it's so crazy to see after so, oh, I mean, well over a decade and to see it evolving finally, really evolving. It's so, it's so fucking cool. And yeah, Super I mean, cool. yeah, I mean, you're right. It could go to more towards like the old school way or like, yeah, the, or the, you're going to have a, you might have two extremes. Mm -hmm. I think um, part of it, this is my theory, because there's something special about how Suicide Silence might approach a record when you guys are actually playing the song, especially like if you look back at like the cleansing, mm -hmm. you guys are playing that live on the floor. There's a feel. There's a feel that's not there with the modern stuff because everything's to the grid and tight and yeah. sampled. Yeah. So I think people are going to crave that feel. Oh, wow. Interesting. I, I think that's going to happen. So I think you might get some like more realistic sounding drums and tones and things like that, if people want to go back to that classic style. That's totally. what makes it magical, in my opinion. And obviously the vocal performance of Mitch and things like that. But yeah, I think that's what people are missing and not realizing so much. I feel Totally. Like. Yeah. I mean, now like the scene is so, especially our genre, like, I mean, we're, we're I mean, it sounds cheesy, but we're in this genre, like together. Our bands are coming up together. It's so weird. It's so weird to like to think about that. But, uh, and now there's, there's a fan base now and there's a lot of people and new people listening to deathcore yeah and 
you're going to have people that have their own taste in deathcore. It, mm-hmm. it could be like, you know, it could be like the old school style or the new school style or like, uh, or maybe this band has a lot, a lot more more black metal in or maybe a little bit more yeah, synth yeah. or like, you know, uh, cinematic features like, like you guys, you know, uh, mm-hmm. there's going to be a, a lot of versions of it because I think it, you're right. I think it's going to be craved and, and whatever style that you're craving, you're going to have options. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll listen mm-hmm. to this band or I'll listen to Brand Sacrifice because I want to hear this. I want to hear uh, Suicide Sounds because I, I want to hear this kind of style. Yeah. You know? It's a good thing. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and neither is better than, than the other, you know? I it's mean, all flavors, all spices. Yeah, it's all, it's all flavors, it's all spices. Everyone has their own opinions and, and, and preference of what you know, kind of style they, they like. Yeah. Uh, but uh, trying not to be the old guy, but it would be kind of cool to see a band kind of go back into like the room and it's like yeah and, and press, i think so and press record see, see what happens you know i think that'd be cool yeah i would love to do something like that with personally the, with with you guys maybe maybe i mean i think a lot of people like how we approach things live some people we were hearing oh i didn't connect with the recordings as much but when i saw them live i liked them live so maybe that would be cool for our band too i don't know we could experiment maybe do like an EP, a different way than we normally do it. That's some. That's an option. That's that sounds cool to me. Yeah. What What would you guys want? Like, really want to do? Um, right now we're actually working on new music and we're experimenting a little bit. I've been listening nice. to a lot of old In Flames lately. Oh wow! So a little bit of Mellow Death influence would be cool. I feel. Um, and. Uh, Definitely still the, the toolkit is there that, you know, the orchestral stuff, the choirs and the mm-hmm. electronics, it's all there. But we're going to we're going to try and delve into some other genres and bring those in as well, I think. But I think in the future, maybe something that's a little more raw for as an EP or something just to give it a shot. Oh, wow. I think that'd be cool. Kind of like how uh, the Acacia Strain did that. Uh, what was that? They did an EP recently that was a completely different style than they normally do it was very cool was it that two-parter yeah it might have been that i can't remember exactly the name of it but i remember listening to it and i was like wow this is very different for them yeah so i think it's cool cool to experiment for different records like if you're doing an ep and you want to try to do something a different style do it yeah why not yeah fuck it yeah i mean uh so it's you leo uh to hear mike Caputo go into a room, start jamming would be, would be pretty cool. Yeah, you he's know? so tight. He is he's ridiculously tight. The thing about if you do a live anything, you really got to have a tight drummer. It's kind of like, kind of like the main like ingredient. If they're sure, they're, if they're a little slop sauce is like it, it doesn't coming from experience. Like when yeah. it just doesn't like when it's not like that. It's okay. Like we we, we can't record like this anymore. We gotta mm-hmm. fucking <laughs> like it's just <laughs> gotta punch her in. Yeah, <laughs> where where's Mike from? Uh, Caputo. Yeah. He is from Texas. He's, he, 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 he's from Houston. He's a Texas guy. He's a Texas guy. Yeah. How do you guys fucking... Okay, you, you have you in Toronto. You have Leo in Connecticut. He's in Connecticut, yeah. And then, yeah, uh, Mike, your sick drummer, is in Houston, Texas. How do you guys, like, practice for a tour? We usually fly out to one destination. Lately, it's been Michigan. What? We'll, we'll, so we'll drive to Michigan. We'll fly him out to Michigan to drive to wherever we're going to start the tour and we'll stay there for about a week and just practice before we do a tour. Really? So we're nice and warmed up and wow, feeling good. That's what we usually do. Make sure all the tech's good and all, and all that. So totally. Yeah. You guys have a fly in place where you guys jam to practice. Wow. <laughs> that's great. I, I, I never, I never heard, heard of that. It's cool. That, that, that's the way you do it. Yeah. It's just, it's just kind of a standard jam spot. It's in, uh, Kind of like the, the hippie town of, uh, where is it? Like Ann Arbor kind of area. It's okay. just like a little jam area. Um, nice. We just we all fly in there, stay at a hotel for a week, and just practice. That's what we usually do. Nice. Just fucking get get in a room and start jamming. Yeah. Doing shots, drinking. <laughs> no, I was kidding. No. <laughs> we, we 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 did that quick, but it was yeah, it's not sustainable. <laughs> was awesome. What about you? Kind of touched on it, but I really want to get more into like 
the writing process of you guys because I'm curious. No, it's, again, like you guys are a little bit more scattered. So is it you and Leo just throwing ideas back and forth? Like Yeah, so Leo, his ritual typically is he must have a hot shower to gain ideas. That's so he'll jump point. in the shower and he'll think about a song and what parts he's going to write in his head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gets down to the computer, pulls the guitar out, and then he starts tracking the song as it would be final almost. Mm. Uh, and then he'll get to a certain point. He'll send me like a, an almost mixed version and he'll be like, what's next? And I'll be like, all right, I hear this, this, and this. I'll hum it to him or send him an example of a, like a song that we, maybe we should do something that sounds like this suffocation riff or nice. whatever it might be. Or this soundtrack, maybe a part of the choir that sounds like this. And then, then it'll yeah. be like, okay, okay, cool. Come back send me some more and then, all right, I have an idea for like a hook. And then we we both work on the, the hook together. Sometimes I'll hum something and send it to him. Sometimes he'll send me like a melody or something like that. We'll go back and do it that way. Huh. So, and then he, I have like a track that's basically ready to go. Mm -hmm. And then I just, I, I sort of do things a little backwards from other vocalists. I get on the computer, have my setup ready to go warm up my vocals and then I start tracking the song right away and I'm writing the lyrics as I'm tracking. So, and then I'm making the patterns as I'm tracking. That's usually how I do it. So I base it on feel and like mood and, and then I get stuck sometimes. So I have like a minute of a song done and it's fully tracked, like ready to go for an album. And then I'll come back to it like a week, finish it. Or sometimes I'll finish it all at once. So, oh, wow. It's a very weird process, but that's how we've done it since day one so that's sick so you're kind of tracking a final version while writing it at the same time so like yeah there's a moment you get the spark that that energy you like it's it's on yeah i'll just try and nail the take and then any doubles anything i'm at all this like actual studio magic stuff yeah. i'm doing it right there then and there Whoa. so it's fully listenable like damn compressors are on everything's ready to go kind of thing so holy shit yeah yeah I yeah i would assume that's how you really captured that energy because I mean, that's kind of like that's kind of the hard part like you want to have like this idea then you're, you're literally you're writing a record so you got you're gonna track it like a year later or something something like crazy but like and then you have to read you have to re go there and like try to bring it out onto it's, it's really yeah. hard but i found problems with that historically i found sometimes like with the after image we'd record a song or, and then we'd go back and redo it again for an album and it wouldn't sound, it wouldn't have the same magic yeah. as the original. Damn, so dude. So I don't like to go back if I don't have to, unless like a take was kind of weak or something and I was burnt, blown out or whatever it might be. Yeah. Maybe I was a little tired. Oh, that could have a little more power to it. Or maybe I'll do that as a low instead of a high. It's maybe stuff like that. But I feel a lot of the mm. time the original like the source that if you can get it perfect the first time, often you can't, you, it's possible, but I feel like sometimes certain magic you can't um, replicate the same way. Totally. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's the thing. That's the fucking magic sauce, dude. <laughs> Once you get it, you're just, you're just cooking and tracking at the same time. It sounds like. Yeah. That's the way to do it. So you, you guys both have at your, uh, at your places that you're staying, you need to have like a full on setup. I, I, I assume they're pretty minimal rigs. Yeah. So I have my PC and interface, um, a preamp and an SM seven B that's it. That's all I have. And then Leo, an interface, a guitar and a DAW. That's all, all you need. huh? That's all we have. We don't even, neither of us even use studio monitors. Wow. <laughs> you, you just have a uh, headphones, just, just headphones, very minimal. Very minimal, but Damn. we try to achieve a big sound with minimal gear. So. Wow. Yeah, that that would probably like mean like whatever take you guys have really has to have that thing to it. Yeah. Yeah. So to make to make to make it sound like the way it does, which which it does. It's awesome. Thank you. Um I mean all you need is this mic, dude. It this does, is a great mic. It does everything, man. Tried and tested. Holy yeah. shit. Dude. Yeah, yeah, Mitch used this mic on uh No Time to Bleed. And that's like my first like, like what the fuck is that funny looking mic, dude? <laughs> Holy shit! And then then you learn like the history about it and mm -hmm. like yeah, it's just it's a fucking yeah, time tested 
fucking. It's just so good on heavy vocals. It's just. Why is that? I don't know. I don't know. It just fucking captures the fucking aggression. It really does. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's really clear too. It's super clear. Like maybe a little bit of EQ and the right compressors and it's good to go. It's, it's not a lot of hard work you need to do to this mic. Damn. Get the right voice into it. Yeah. Or most voices are, most voices are solid in this mic, I find. A lot of the time you don't have to change mics. Interesting. So. Do you have to do any, I mean, oh wait, you actually have, you have the yeah, preamp. Because uh, like with like this, you need like a, because these, I mean, obviously they're great quality mics, but you kind of, you need something to, uh, to boost it. Yeah, as yeah. Far, as far as volume, like what, when you're like a, a heavy singer, like what, do you, do you need to do that or what like um i i still do it but my interface is very low uh as far as the oh. volume knob on my interface but interesting i like that that extra gain without having to push the interface too much so you don't get any of that buzz or noise or anything so it's a lot it's like clean signal so interesting yeah it makes sense so you, you turn the preamp lower and then you oh, you turn the interface lower yeah turn the interface lower and use the preamp to boost the signal clean it's just Damn. a it's just a cloud lifter, that little uh, little blue box oh, yeah, that I goes got, in between. I got, yeah, I got the it's this right here. Yeah, yeah exactly that. <laughs> oh yeah. my god, I got the fucking rack version. Is it? Yeah, it's just something so simple. It's great. It doesn't add any color of any kind, which is nice. Keeps yeah. the mic out as it sounds, and uh, then you can do all the work on the on the back end. Wow, how was it for you guys doing? My my, my favorite, my personal favorite song of you guys is. Uh, Lifeblood. That's a great one. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's very fun to play live. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, that, I, I guess you would call it a, a chorus? Yeah, yeah, there's a dun, chorus in there. Dun, 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 dun. I mean, uh, is, there, is there two versions of, of, of that song? There's one with Will. Yep. And there's and the one on the record is... There's also a remix one that's like sort of like an EDM version. I love that yeah. remix. I was, <laughs> I was just playing your shit on Spotify today, just letting it go. And like an hour in, I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and I'm, I'm looking at my like, oh that their remix i mean i tend not to like remixes at all but for some reason that one is fucking sick yeah that one's super that's leo too is that leo yeah he remixed that what as well what the fuck yeah that guy sucks dude holy <laughs> shit dude that's fucking he does remixes as well yeah dude that's a talented young man he is i don't know he's he's god tier <laughs> he can do anything you guys are both freaks, dude. Oh my <laughs> god, you guys are just doing crazy shit with fucking one mic. Jesus, <laughs> man, what the hell, dude. I need, I need all this crazy shit to make me sound cool. God, you guys are just doing it. With the, this is bare stuff. That's a really, dude. I mean, it's funny when I, when that remix came on, I was like, I was looking at the song credits. My who, uh, you know, I, I was looking for mm -hmm. like the DJ or like remixer of like who, who did this, and I, I, I couldn't find anyone. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. that's odd, you know. But now that explains it. Cause, yeah, yeah. Because Leo did it. He did. Usually, like, what's kind of cool about that is, like, you guys did it, and then you posted it. You yeah. know? And what, what, what was, like, whose idea what was that? So we put out a song called Enemy, and we wanted to sort of add more content to that release. So it was, yeah. we sort of had an EP, I guess. It was, like, three songs Cool. with that. And uh, so that track... We introduced uh, a little bit of clean singing in it. Well, it's it's yeah. aggressive singing, but yeah, um, and it, it features Spencer Chamberlain from Under Oath uh, as well. Cool. So it's pretty cool across genre action. That, yeah. uh, and then we added those remixes to that little EP to have some, a little more content uh, in between uh, Lifeblood and whatever would come next. Mm. So that nice. was really the idea with it. And originally, we were going to do sort of orchestral arrangements. Yeah, uh, but I thought it'd be cool to to play with some electronic stuff since we do lean into electronic usage in our music. But maybe we will yeah. still do some orchestral tracks too. Yeah, you guys, it, it's pretty obvious that you guys kind of take influences from a ton of areas. I mean, I've seen like you guys are inspired by anime, yeah, uh, cinematic hip hop. You guys just take all kinds of shit, mm -hmm. right? It's it's awesome, man. Thank you. You, yeah. you guys aren't afraid to. Uh, to uh, be inspired from other things other than the chosen genre that you're playing, which is huge, you know? Yeah. And we 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 do that. We take everything but from metal, you know? It's, it's, like, it's kind of how you get, like, your personality in there. Exactly. You know? It's 
it's an expression of yourself, really, your music. So, I mean, for me, I just want to incorporate all the things I like in life. Yeah. If I can, somehow. <laughs> so you like anime, huh? I do. Okay. <laughs> I do a lot. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, is it, which I learned from you, actually, is it uh, manga? Ma- manga, yeah. Manga, yeah. I learned, yeah. I learned that from you because I thought it was manga. A lot but, of people call it that. It's yeah. kind of interchangeable, but manga. I think it's it's manga technically the way it's supposed to be said. But yeah, so that's it's all you, right? That's all me. Yeah, Leo's not so much into that stuff. But wow, hey, so I, I take it you take like the theme from that. Yeah, so it's uh, the originally the project is based on a manga called Berserk. Yes, uh, by an author Kentaro Miura. Uh, he actually just passed away. Rest in peace. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, uh, one of my favorite animes and manga series of all time. And I think I've always, uh, said that it's basically the death metal of anime yeah, or manga because it's so dark and, uh, decrepit and, but it's also deep and philosophical and beautiful at times. Mm -hmm. So I think that it was a good reflection of the sound we were sort of coming up with. Um, with the music that we were writing together, Leo and I. So it was, that was the idea since we originally had just planned for this to be a one-off, just like one EP to see if we could kind of do this style and have some fun doing it. Hmm. And then it ended up being the main project, but that's where it all started was from that influence from Berserk. That is, that is so... That is that's fucking crazy, man. You had like, this idea, then you oh, I mean, I'm I'm inspired by you know, Berserk, and then you you put the idea, and oh, it's, it's a oh, it's a fun project. Uh, it's fine. Let's see, let's see what happens. Yeah, that's so cool, man. People are just I guess they just connected to it. I don't I I honestly I'm not well versed in the anime at all. I know nothing about it. That's all, right. that's all right. So, but from the little. That I do you understand about it from from what you're you're telling me? It sounds like the the circle is like fucking. It sounds like like a dark. It's dark. Yeah, yeah, like a. So like a lot of the the really popular ones like One Piece and Bleach and all that kind of stuff is like a shonen. That's what they call it. Like the more lighthearted stuff. It might have dark moments. Yeah. Um, and I believe like Berserk and other uh, series in that vein are, or is going to be like called a seinen which is more adult manga. Got it. Or anime. So um, that's sort of the difference between them. It would not It would be like your R-rated type stuff. Got it. Got it. As opposed to your PG-13 or that kind of thing, yeah. which is more much shown in as more like PG-13 type stuff. Oh, wow. So they, it, so, so they call it different things. For they like call the, them different things. Okay. And it's also magazine related because there's the big magazines called Shonen Jump in – Japan, which they released a lot of the series that became huge hits, like yeah. Bleach and One Piece and all, all that kind of stuff. So, and, and Naruto. Wow. So it all kind of stems from from that. How does someone get into anime? Especially not only anime, but like the dark shit. So, I'd say if I was recommending something, if you like binging TV series and dramas or thrillers or even like fantasy stuff like Game of Thrones or whatnot. Yeah. You could start with something like, um, I have a friend that refused to watch anime. Thought it was so lame and stupid and whatnot. It's cartoony. (laughs) Yeah. And he watched uh, one called Death Note. Mm-hmm. Fell in love with it. Now he has a tattoo, a huge forearm oh. tattoo of Whoa. one of the characters uh, called Ryuk from the show. So that would be a good one, I'd say, to start with. Uh, so Death Note. Death Note. I think that one's very palatable for those who haven't really has seen an, or watched a lot of anime or, or read manga. And then the other one I would say would be One Punch Man. My dad refuses again, to, to watch anime, and he couldn't stop wa- watching One Punch Man. So that's another really good one. One One Punch Man? One Punch Man. Wow. I'm getting tattoos, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, I, I don't like it, and then you can see me next time the fucking chest piece. 
<laughs> it happens if you fucking connect with something, you just want to, oh my God, I, I got to fucking get it. And you can't it. stop. That's all you think about when you really connect with something that, that hits, I feel. And I, I, I'm happy that for my friend, he was able to find that because I think there's something in that's missing in some sort of Western media that's special about the the style of Japanese and even Korean uh, anime and manga. So um, I think it's worth diving into. You and there's something for everybody. Not everything is for everyone, mm-hmm. but um, there's all different genres and styles. There's really dark stuff like Berserk. There's really lighthearted stuff with cute characters that are for kids. There's yeah. There's everything you think of in in the world of anime. So wow, it seems like you have a connection with the. Uh Japanese culture, it sounds like. Definitely. Dude, you, got, you guys could go out there. Yeah, we definitely do with this band. You sure. have to. I mean, especially you, you You have to, man. Yeah. Man, you will fucking, your, your mind will blow off, dude. It's like, oh, shit, I'm surrounded by anime. They have some cool shit there, dude. We've yeah. only been there once. I was actually able to go with the after image. Really? Uh, yeah, I was able to go. Oh, shit. Um, we went to Tokyo and Osaka. We played those two shows. Um, and it, it, I didn't get a ton of time there, but I really want to go back. I'm telling my girlfriend we're going to go. How, how was it for you? Uh, it was really good. Uh, super, super polite people. And it was actually weird when we played the show because I was not used to how attentive and actually quiet in between songs people were. Because in America, mm-hmm. if you're quiet in between songs, it's maybe you're doing something wrong. Or, you suck. Or you suck. Yeah. yeah. But there... People are singing along when you're playing, and then they're, they they want to hear what you have to say, mm-hmm. and they're very attentive and they're very polite, and um, so they're and they're excited when you're playing, but they really want to hear what you have to say in between songs. So that was mm-hmm. a little odd for me to get used to. And then at first I was like, "Oh, are we like garbage right now?" Like, but no, yeah. it was just how sort of they react in that scenario, and and they'll cheer if you say something, you know, to get them pumped up. But yeah, it was dead quiet in between songs like i could hear yeah like anything happen any little drop of a pin i could hear it so damn not used to that did you get a chance to like to walk the streets at all i did a little bit and uh i was able to go to the pokemon center which was pretty sweet um we went to uh tower records which was very cool yeah that place is cool man and we checked out a few temples um sick so i there's so much more to do so i have to go back soon but that was back in 2018 may of 2018 we did that so well oh, oh yeah you're saying that you 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 dropped the ep yeah when you got, when you, when we got, were there yeah oh wow that's fu- that's funny because yeah you you drop a, a a ep with a heavy fucking band that's themed and then you're you're, you're already out there yeah and nobody knew about it there when we were there they only knew about the, the existing band. It's, and it's funny because we were treated like the biggest band in the world when we were, when we were there, but we had no connection with the After Image in, in America comparatively. Nobody knew who we were. We were a small band. But when we were huh. in Japan, they treated us like we were rock stars. So nuts. It's funny how things go. Holy shit, dude. Well, I mean, I, I can't wait to see how how you guys connect there. I mean, they, yeah. I mean, yeah, they would have to know like you're your connection with that place and and uh and the culture now now that i mean i i've, I've heard you say that heard you say that like a few times so i mean it's it's out there so um, i'm really curious how they 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 receive a uh, brand of sacrifice curious yeah me too uh i'm not sure because i don't know what deathcore is like in japan i'm not too tuned in with it mm-hmm. as far as uh popularity yeah but they love metal that's for sure. Love metal. That's what's kind of also crazy about like our genre. It's still growing in other places of the world. You have like mm-hmm. the states. You have you know Canada, uh, Mexico, South America, Europe, and Australia of uh, Japan. I mean, they're all kind of taking it in in their own way and grow yeah. and growing at their own pace, which is really cool. Yeah. You, know, you might you know tour a lot here, but then oh, you know you still got to go to the Japan. You know who knows where the decor scene is at there. You know, it's it's still like a a, a new genre. It is, you know, to like it really you know, is other places and other people. It's brand new. Someone's hearing 
Brandon Sacrifice right now. They're like, who, 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 who's this? Who, who the, <laughs> yeah. someone, someone's talking about it right now, dude. Holy shit, it's, it's growing. It's a magical thing that the internet has really helped connect people musically, for sure. It's one of the few positives. There is a few positives with the internet, you know? Yeah. There's this, the uh, people can hear your, your music, you know? Uh, if you use, depending how you use social media, I found a lot of positives in it as far as connecting mm -hmm. with, 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 with people. You try to turn off the, it's really hard to use social media for, for what it is and also not get addicted to it. Totally. You know, I was, I was, I was thinking about this, uh, fuck, like a, f a few days ago, like, damn, am I addicted to my phone? Holy shit. I'm, I'm on it all the time, dude. I need to fucking chill out. You know, gotta, you gotta like kind of step back and like, okay. And they fucking put it down for a little, a little bit, but it's so hard because there, there is benefits to it. Totally. Like, there, there's, there's undeniable benefits, uh, to, to connecting with people or just to, to meeting new friends, mm -hmm. trying to find that like, you know, middle ground, you know, cause, cause I, I'll go on Instagram and just look up like kitty cat videos. Same. I'll just do it. Like I'm looking at cat reels for, I don't know how long. And cause I'm just looking for stuff to send my girlfriend. I'm just looking at all the cat videos. I'm like, oh, I need to fucking put this down for a little bit, dude. I mean, it's, it's so, it, but it's so. It's been an hour. And, yeah. yeah, but man, it, but it's so <laughs> positive. It's just pure love. See, when you see when you see a cat video, dude, you're just like, oh man, you see all these cute little cats, you know, they're all they're all being being cats. Let your love they're, cats. Same. No, uh, I I could definitely tell that you're um, a cat person. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And it's like, oh, like this, here's Kyle. He's definitely is a psychopath. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, dude, they're just so, and it it's endless too. Cat videos are endless. Some, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's just pure, pure love. But then obviously, you know, you, you fucking, so much time just goes by. Okay, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm addicted to cat videos now. But, you know, well, <laughs> with your phone too, like you're often just using it to kill time too. If you're standing in a line waiting for coffee or waiting for a train, mm -hmm. you know, you're just kind of on your phone anyway. Yeah. There, I've seen, I read an article recently where people are actually buying what they call dumb phones. They're going back to those old oh, yeah. Nokia's and things like that, that don't really have a lot of internet mm -hmm. connectivity. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was one girl who had did, done it for six months. She worked an office job, so she's still on the computer and answering emails and whatnot, but mm -hmm. she wasn't really using her phone. She found that she was able to sleep a little bit better at mm -hmm. night. Um, she was way less stressed. It actually reduced tension in her body. Whoa. By not using your phone as much. Because we use our phones for a, at least three hours a day. If, we, if we're, if we even in passing, when we're just scrolling, looking at stuff. Totally. So, um, but for some people, that's just not possible, depending on what you do for work. Yeah. You know, if you're in business, you got to be connected. You got to be able to, to respond to those emails really quickly. Yeah. If you're out and about, you're going to meetings, things like that, it's impossible. Yeah. So... Um, and, and imagine typing a text message, pressing the button three times to get one character again. I don't want to go back to those days personally. I'd rather have a proper keyboard. <laughs> I know yeah, it's really hard to go back, dude. Yeah. It's so fucking tough. How, how are you doing with, with your phone? Honestly, I'm probably on it too much as well. Damn. I definitely, I definitely scroll the cat videos a lot, <laughs> but I mean, I, I, I have to use it a lot for the band. And also I have like a, another business called Shibori Threads. It's like yeah. a custom tie-dye streetwear brand, and we work with metal bands. So I'm often doing customer service stuff or yeah. talking to clients or you know what, whatever factory I'm working with at the time and whatnot. So that's also part of it. But I might as well um, sit on my PC and do that. But sometimes you're out and about, and you need to be able to respond to things. So I know it's tough. Like some people, some phone calls or some texts, like – or like, like require like an ASAP answer. It's just mm -hmm. like, fuck, you know, gotta have pause for your doing and send them to the text or, or quick, quick phone call. You need yeah. it. You know, when you're in business, you're talking to other people in business that are doing the same thing that are fucking going, you know? Yeah. It's, it's tough, man. It's, it's so tough. Uh, are you on TikTok yet? I am. Unfortunately, I, I don't boy. create 
TikTok, my myself, like my personal self, mm-hmm. we definitely do it for the band. Yeah. Um, but it's real. That algorithm is evil. It's so good. Yeah. It's so easy to get sucked in for so long. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they know what they're doing. Yeah. But it's also a great tool for bands. Totally. To get noticed, um, whether it's related to you being a sound that becomes popular or if it's your own channel, yeah, whatever it might be, but super useful tool. I know the labels are really pushing it hard and some artists are pushing back on that, mm-hmm. but it's a pretty undeniable that it's a good tool. It's undeniable, dude. I've been telling my my dinosaur band fucking for part two years, hey, we gotta get a TikTok, gotta get on TikTok, and they're finally being, oh, they, they finally see the importance that I do. <laughs> it, it, it is... Uh, the language on the app is definitely far more advanced than what I've experienced. Like you had like the jump from, I don't know, I don't know if, if, if you remember Friendster. No, I don't remember Friendster, no. Friendster was right before MySpace. Okay. So that, that jump was easy. The jump from MySpace to Facebook was pretty easy. Then you had mm-hmm. obviously Facebook to Instagram was pretty easy. But that jump from Instagram to TikTok was a very, that was, that was a big jump. It is like, a very different environment. If you right. go like in TikTok, my, I'm like, holy shit, this is a lot. And it took me a long time to kind of understand it and understand like the, I don't know, hashtags and I guess you could say the the communication culture and, and language, mm-hmm. you know, stuff. But yeah, it's undeniable. I mean, one, one day I had 49 followers and a month later I had like 2,000 followers. And like I have a few, you know. Uh, clips that did like you know uh, like a hundred thousand, which is it's just not possible. Instagram, no, it's not that it's Instagram. They just want you to pay for ads. Yes, so they really yeah. throttle you. Okay. And same totally. with Facebook. Facebook isn't what it used to be for reach. And even yeah. when you, I feel if you know what you're doing with with ads, you can get a little more reach. But TikTok is is free it's if you free. know what to navigate it now some things i don't think are we'll never really know because we can't see the back end but when things do work it works far more effectively than uh facebook and instagram i think at this point in time totally it's undeniable yeah it it works very well i definitely definitely been living my life differently the past few months like i don't you kind of need to, I'm on, I'm on a conspiracy guy, but like, you know, I, I do believe like there's something in TikTok. If you read like the, what they're allowed to do in your mm. phone, it's kind of alarming. So, okay. You know, I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm, I don't take shits anymore with, um, about being on my phone. I just don't do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> little, 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 little things, you know, I mean, I mean, okay. There's a camera staring back at my face. Yeah. So I'd rather not have videos of me taking a shit that just fucking pop up somewhere, you know? <laughs> Do they have access to your camera, your, 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 your microphone, what you're typing? They have access to, like, to all that shit. So literally since then, dude, you know, I don't, I'm not really, I'm just careful what kind of pictures I take. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't, I don't take news or anything, but you know, I just don't want to take pictures where like, oh no, I w- w- would I want this out? You yeah. know, I mean, I mean, typing, I had this idea, like oh, it was, Last, last uh, November, I was I was high, I was high and think and thinking about the cell phone. I'm like, it's kind of weird. Like, let's say we're, we're talking about TikTok. Okay, like I put a lot of stuff in, in my notepad. Mm-hmm. You know, just like notes, things to do, ideas I have for songs, ideas I have for this business or business ideas, and pretty much everything I have in my head is in my notepad. You know, you you know a lot about me and like what I want to do. I was like. Someone has access to that straight up, and they, whatever idea I have can be literally stolen, and there's no way to, there's no way to trace that. No, there wouldn't be. You know, it's like oh, this is obviously me being high, and <laughs> and this was before uh, I downloaded the app of uh, TikTok, and now I downloaded. It, I'm like, oh shit, I need to be careful while I'm typing into my notepad, because because your ideas could be fucking just yanked. I mean, it might be a little bit of conspiracy in there, but mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know. I just I feel like when, when you type something, especially with an app so invasive, like you kind of just, just you know think about you know just think a little bit, you know. I, I, I've already fucked up. I put all my passwords in there. It's just all, all my shit for like you know all, all my passwords are it's there on my phone. And if you, if you want to hack into my shit, you're gonna hell have all my passwords. It's like damn, you got to just trying to be careful, you know. Yeah. 
There, 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 I think there is, there's always a price to pay. There, there's always a price when you have something so, because TikTok is pretty fucking sick. I mean, once you get a hang of it, I'm like, oh, this is great. It's not, mm-hmm. it's not cheated yet. It's not like, no one's negative on it yet. So it's, it's kind of enjoyable. It was, it was very positive. I'm, I'm having, I'm implying the comments and it's, it's a positive conversation. So, oh, this is, this is nice. And obviously like the algorithm is just like so advanced and beneficial. Mm-hmm. I don't even want to start looking at cat videos yet on TikTok. I'm, I'm, I'm actually afraid. <laughs> I mean, I'm already addicted to Instagram cat videos. If I look at one fucking cat video on TikTok, uh, my, my phone might fucking explode. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just uh, undeniable. If, if you're a band, it's really, it's really un... Yeah, don't, don't be us. You really, if you're a band, you've really got to get on there. And at least, like, you know, experiment with it. Some, something might hit, something might not. But I think just trying... Uh, and, and a mistake that my band made is like, you know, I mean, we're, we're fucking jaded. We're a little, little, little bit older and I'll be like, hey, we, we should get on this. And then like, I'll be like, well, I don't really think we should understand that. But like, this the laziness, if you're just not lazy and you try to go into it, there is a lot of benefits and just learning mm-hmm. about what's, I think even if you don't use it, just learn what, what's around you, you know? Yeah. And I, I do notice like a lack a discipline, especially when we're talking musicians, because we're we're fucking lazy, dude. Musicians are so lazy, <laughs> you know. So I like, you know, got to grind. You, you got to grind, and I, I really and appreciate it doesn't it. stop. It doesn't. That's what. It, it doesn't. Sometimes I take the foot off the gas pe- pedal, and I realize, you know what? There's so much more work to be done. There's yeah. so much. There's a way better tour we could still get. There's a mm-hmm. more audience to capture in this area yeah. or in that area. We haven't done this kind of video yet. We haven't written this kind of song. There's always more you can do. Yes. Yes. And there's always more things to learn. Yeah. And there's always smarter people than you that you can meet. One, so, 100%. And that's, I mean, that's sort of how we've been trying to navigate things. And that's what I always try and tell myself when I get, you know, I do a tour. We were talking about touring for two and three months at a time and how mm-hmm. grueling that can be. But yeah. And I was pretty dead after the last couple of runs we did. And I took the foot off the gas pedal and I started feeling a little depressed about it. Wow. And, and now I'm like, okay, I got to do this, that, and the next thing. Okay, I'm going to design mm-hmm. this tonight. I'm going to get this done. So I I would encourage people in, especially young bands, to grind harder than you ever have prior and don't stop doing it. Um, if, if the band starts getting bigger, there's still always more you can do. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Do you... Do you feel any pressure being like an up and coming band like this uh, with so much around you and, and these these kind of years where like all oh, your you're kind of pressure to do this and that and this? Like, I mean, what what's it been like like for you guys coming up? I think the more we've grown, I think the pressure increases. Wow. I think the music is still fun to make. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I've always said to Leo and everybody else, if it's not fun to make this stuff anymore, we have to probably reevaluate what's going on with the band. Yes. Because that's, we said it before and we'll say it again, that people can tell when you're not having fun creating it, something and, and you're not in it. So, but it's still, it, it's more fun than it ever has been to write the music. But what starts to become a pressure is releasing things at the right time mm-hmm. or actually maybe we do need to put a record out this year instead of next year because mm-hmm. like things are really popping right now and we want to make sure yes. that you're a part of the wave. Um, you know, for us, we will do things our own way and incorporate things that we like stylistically, but there's also sort of a meta. I think there's always sort of a meta in, in metal music or any kind of core music mm-hmm. of some sort. So thinking about how you can be a part of that without sounding dated if people come back to listen to that album when that meta doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. You know, those are those are things to think about. And those are sort of little pressures that you might have in the back of the mind. But I think it's more release-related stuff that is a pressure uh, for yeah. us now. But not so much writing the music. I think that comes naturally. Um, sometimes for me, I get stuck a little bit. I don't know how Leo is such a machine. He can... 
he gets stuck and he's like so upset when he gets stuck. And I'm like, man, I've been stuck for like weeks at a time and you get stuck and the next week you finish the song. That's, that's amazing still. Yeah. That's like unheard of actually. Yeah. And I'm like, for me, I, sometimes I'll get stuck for a month. So that's, that can happen, but we get it done eventually. We always hit the, the deadlines that we set. So, but yeah, I think making sure that you get the quality music out in the right time, that's, that's the pressure now. Yeah. And making sure you, you are part of the right tours as yeah. well. Yeah, right tours are definitely very, very crucial. I mean, but that is, that is good pressure, though. Definitely. You know, like, oh, yeah, you need, you know, we do need, we're, we're humans, and there's something about having a deadline. There's something about it that we're like, you get more creative. And even if you might have like a, a, a writer's block here and there, like it, there's just something about the deadline that I, I, don't, I don't know what it is. Why, why we're wired that way, but I'll show you guys put out a record in three months and mm -hmm. weren't really writing much six months ago. But for some reason, when you, when you know that deadline, you just come up with songs to start appearing. I think you're right. I think um, there's two things that I think are very important. They're, they sound so simple, and um, like, but they help. Number one is lists, and number two is deadlines for bands, mm -hmm. if you're thinking about a record. Mm -hmm. If you have a list, you can compartmentalize one thing at a time. All right, I got to get the lyrics done today, or I got to mm -hmm. get this idea started today, and then mm -hmm. tomorrow I'll do that. Having a list of what you need to get done and then deadlines of when you need to do them, that's so helpful. Very helpful. So just the basic organizational stuff, but sometimes, but when you like, oh, we'll write it, we'll get to that, you know, you can't make magic happen in this amount of time. But you can actually, yes. I think. Yes. And I think often because of the, like you're saying, that having the deadline, you might have created something you, you wouldn't have possibly bef by having all the time in the world. Yes. So. Very very true there's just something about this going you know yeah or sometimes you have like a maybe the song isn't that sick or that maybe for you guys like or you like maybe like the lyrics not, not so sick but for some reason when you start the process it'll, it'll just lead you to somewhere yeah you know, if you, you're just doing it like you'll you'll you will be led somewhere it's like it's going and like you're just you're, you're going to, to like an unknown you're constantly going to like the unknown you know but but you have to start you have to because uh, I mean, also as humans, we're very like things have to be perfect, and uh, mm -hmm. you you you, you want to wait for like the right time. But yeah, I mean, you you guys are doing it. Just fucking put out an EP and boom, or, yeah. or, or start working on a record. And, and you guys are sounds like Leo is a very talented guy. He is. He sounds like a machine. He is. And that's, yeah. it's, it's very helpful to have uh, someone like that in in your band that is that creative. And I, I bet he you know inspires you. Yeah, he does. You know, Tef definitely, it's great. Like when you get a new, uh, ener there's when you have someone in your band or your close circle that has that energy, it it, it does affect you in, in a very positive way. Totally. You know, it's just like shit. Like I mean, I got to fucking do something. He just wrote, wrote the song. I, I got to fucking write a song now, or I I, I got to finish this thing that he finished. You know, it's just yeah. This con this constant like he's gonna. You know, you don't want to like lead. You know, let down your your band, you know? That, that's what I feel. If I'm like getting stuck, I feel like I'm letting him down. And he doesn't feel that way. Yeah. Like he, he, he's aware of deadlines and things like that, but he doesn't feel like I'm letting him down. And he's told me that, but oh, I feel like I am, you know? And yeah. he's, he's cranked out three songs and I can't even crank out just the vocals and some, yeah. but it happens. It's cause it's, you know, at the end of the day, when you're a singer, it's diff a little different than an instrument. Like you speak, you can speak to someone, a human being with an instrument. But when you're another human being, that's a different level. You know what I mean? Mm. So that connection is important and making sure that you can nail that is, is another thing. And sometimes it just comes and other times it's going to take time. So I always yeah. try to remind myself of that when I'm putting things together, that it's, you know, the human connection is important and you got to make sure that that's right. That's sitting correctly. Yeah. Now, do, do you find that, um, uh even sometimes when you're not inspired, you can still come up with something that will connect with people? I think sometimes, but I feel I'll, I'll be able to tell, I'll have to go back to something and, and change it a little bit Yeah. if I feel like it's not quite right. So 
luckily I have a lot to draw from, you know, because I have those inspirations from manga and, and things like that. But at the end of the day, I want to be able to have the average person still get something from the music, uh, mm -hmm. lyrically as well, uh, or even just f from the way I sound or the aggression that's there if they don't read in as much in the lyrics. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, shit. I mean, you guys are pretty consistent and it seems like you're, you're very busy. Like how, how long have you sat with a idea? Like, cause I mean, you track vocals right then and there. So I'm curious, how long have you ever sat with like a, okay, it's, I started a song, but how long it took this long to actually finish it? Um, I think the song, if I'm looking at like our last record as a, as an example, so there's the song Lifeblood itself. I literally did that in six hours. F lyrics, tracking, everything, wow. all all in one shot. Right, wrote it and recorded it in one shot in one in one day, basically. Nice. Then there was a song on there called uh, Prophecy of the Falcon, and that one took like months to finish. And there, I I think I did vocals three or four different times on that song. Wow. It just wasn't. It just wasn't coming the same way. Mm -hmm. So there, there are songs where it, it takes a long time and there's songs where it's just, okay, everything's just hitting. I don't have to change anything. It's good to go. Yeah. I, I prefer those experiences, but of course. they're a little more rare, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. Every once in a while, you just kind of hammer it out. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, this is, you're not working, but like, you just, okay, I just want to, you need to put some time into it. It's, it happens, you know, yeah. which, I mean, could could be a hit, could not be a hit, but you don't we don't we don't know. You know, like the mm -hmm. your your fan base will take it and, 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 and do what they want with it, you know? Yeah. It's crazy. Well shit, man. I, I don't wanna keep you for uh too long. Uh I really appreciate your uh, time, Kyle. Yeah, thanks for having uh, me. It's really cool to see you guys fucking slaying it. Thank you. It's cool, man. And uh I, I wouldn't be surprised if uh we do a tour together at, at some point. I would love to do that. That'd be amazing. I mean, I mean, shit, you guys drove from fucking what Toronto and came uh came here to SoCal to play one show. That's what <laughs> that's that's what you got to do, man. That's fucking yeah. sick. You get, wait, you guys drive here or, or uh, we or flew, fly, we flew. flew, yeah. So everyone probably everyone flew separately. Yeah, obviously. I flew with my girlfriend uh, from the Buffalo area, and then the, oh, cool. The other guys flew from. Houston and Toronto, and then Leo was it, he flew out of uh, New Jersey, I think. So, what are you doing for gear? Um, we are we're all in the box anyway, so we're, it's all uh, direct. Wow! So we just have one rack, and we run that, and it's got my wireless mic set up in there. We got the fins, everything we need. Pretty minimal setup, even live as well. And then just a laptop, and we uh, rented a drum kit. Damn, you guys are self-contained as fuck, dude. Yeah. Holy shit, man. That's great. That's cool. I mean, so, so what, I know I know you, you mentioned um, you have, you have a, a rack, but what like is that one straight up rack, or do you, or do you fly with multiple cases and then and then build and then build the rack here? Um, so we'll probably we're gonna use a little more than we normally do. So we're gonna we brought some of the components um, on the plane, and then we're gonna build a little bit bigger rack. Um, our our tech has another rack for us cool. that we're going to use. So, but usually it's just a one, maybe this high, rack and everything's in it. So it's one tower of power. That's about it. But we're going to get a little bit more substantial with it because we hadn't been running ears oh. for a long time. So now we're getting on the ears and adding interface, bigger interface and compressors and all that stuff. So it's going to get a little more complicated. But but yeah. we were running it pretty minimal before. Actually, is that kind of rare where like you have, you have like the DI stuff, but usually those bands are, are on ears. So you just, you, you, are you just, just blasting the wedge? Yeah, we were just blasting the wedge before. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was a little rough to be honest, but. Really? Yeah. It's, I mean, sometimes a venue has amazing wedges and it's no big deal. Yeah. But then you introduce things like possible feedback and which totally. don't really exist when you're on ears. Totally. So I would love to eliminate that. Uh, but I mean, then I, I switched to the, uh, the Telefunken mics and okay. that doesn't have as much of an issue with the feedback compared to like sure stuff that I've had in the past I mm -hmm. found. So, but I would love to go to ears just cause you get that precise 
sound and it's a lot better for singers i think too just to make sure you're consistent and whatnot you can totally. hear everything as you should hear it so yeah you, you see the singers always either they'll fucking take out one one ear sometimes yeah so you have you have the, you have the uh, option it's, it's really cool to hear like that that like condensed like sound but then like to get like their sound on like the room too yeah, i do i i often use just like a weird vocal thing but I often use the resonance from the room to make sure I'm hitting my low right sometimes. Really? Yeah. So How does that work? Um, sometimes I hit, hear the sound hitting the wall and coming back to me, and then I'll know if my tone's in the right spot. So it's a little weird thing, but you can't do that with ears the same oh, way. Oh, wow. So that's how I know it's hitting correctly for the crowd, as because I'm not going to hear it in my wedge with the mix that the crowd's hearing. It's going to be pretty dry. Interesting. So that's, that's what I use. It's a little weird thing that I do, but I won't be able to do that as much. I guess I could do it if I took one ear out, but yeah, yeah. Holy shit! That is, I never heard that before. Yeah, it's just just a weird thing that I do. But but it's cool because you're actually filling. You're really filling a room. Yeah, like like you, yeah. you, you kind of have to. You do, yeah. I I think some people don't like ears because they want a, that feel of the the crowd and the the loud amps and and things like that, but. Um, yeah, it's, but it is a lot more precise and consistent. So, yeah, I, I also assume it's probably better for your, your hearing. Yeah, that too. Especially if you're doing months and months of touring. Yeah. Every day, blasting your ears. It's yeah. gonna, I mean, I'm waking up with ringing even now, so that's not uh, good. Oh so, yeah. Yeah. It's gotta welcome, go to ears. <laughs> welcome to our, our, our lives, man. Yeah, yeah. You're like, shit, I gotta fucking fix this. Yeah. Oh man. I, I need a good pair of, of, uh. I like I like I like those earplugs that have the uh, filters in them. But those like those little D T V filters. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of waiting for them to get a little bit more advanced. But it, they're I mean, we're we're on we're right on on the cuff. We're like they're they're, they're coming out. They're getting a little bit sicker. Like, like the ear molds with that little like filter. Because yeah. I try inners and I, I fucking God, it's <laughs> a fuck man. And but don't do what I do. I'm fucking deaf. Anyway, <laughs> well, Kyle, dude, it was fucking really cool seeing you. I'm actually really looking forward to seeing you and and the band tomorrow at a fucking massive venue. Great, great PA. So very stoked. So you're really going to hear your vocals bounce off the uh, walls there. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, love you guys. And uh, where uh, where can people find you? Uh, you can find us on YouTube, Spotify, Facebook, TikTok. On TikTok. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Do not take shits while you're on the phone. <laughs> they, they, they fucking see you what, what, what about personal um same thing with all those minus the tiktok i'm not really posting on there but i also stream on twitch sometimes oh cool so it's just uh kyle of sacrifice nice yeah cool well kyle thank you again and uh yeah that's it thank you everyone later